Welcome to Mini Mastery. In this series, we're going to be painting my player's miniatures from primer to tabletop ready. We're going to be going through each player's mini and starting from just a primer mini and painting it through layer by layer, step by step. You'll be able to see the progress, follow along, and learn about the characters who are in our current campaign. Let's check it out. All right, getting back to painting jaw. Today we're gonna to focus on some of the detail work. So starting with just white. So this isn't actually white. This is called a frosty white. So it's an off white. It's got a, just like a touch of tan, but some blue in it. It'll play off the greens pretty nice and contrast enough with that white to really give it a punch of detail. So with that fabric, framing it in with this white, it's going to play out nice. And again, a little bit different setup than what I've done in the past. So there are just a couple of times where the mini is off the screen. I do apologize about that for jaw. Now starting in the next year, our campaign is going to go from every other week to every week. So I'm hoping to have a lot more details of the characters and um, maybe some of the stories of their adventures as we go through. With jaw on the last session, he really focused in on a imprisoned devil and made sure that it was taken care of. I thought that was very in character and definitely what Jaw would have done. It was actually kind of surprising that he had to go it alone a little bit. But I think in the character development of the story, that's something that he's going to be able to use kind of to his advantage to call out some of the other characters. We'll see how that plays out in game. So after doing a good layer, making sure I get all of the little bits with that frosted white, the shadow color, I didn't want it to be as dynamic as the rest of the fabric there. I wanted it to stand out a little bit differently. So that one is going to be using the same color but then toned with the mid-tone of green. And just hitting the back layer here because it also has that same trim that is actually sculpted into the miniature. So both sides will get that same base color. And then in the recesses they'll get, uh, it's just a touch tonally darker and green tinted of that same color. Again, I want to utilize green as much as possible because that's the player's favorite color. Of course, we did the base in that green so it can be seen easily on the battle map or any battle mats. So tying in that green wherever I can is going to be key to getting some of those details to really stand out but tie back into both the primary focal point of that fabric and the character's favorite color, or I'm sorry, the player's favorite color. So this is going through and starting to put in some of the shadow colors. I'm looking for where recesses are gonna be. And again, it isn't gonna be as stark of a contrast as what you see on the greens of the loincloth. Again, I wanted it to feel like a different fabric to the eye. So maybe the loincloth itself is like a silk where it's got a lot more contrast in colors. And then it's framed in maybe like a wool or a linen. So a little bit different effect to really stand out. The recesses on this are not as noticeable as the loincloth itself. It doesn't have 
as much going on it, but still really interesting. And then for the highlights, I'm going with a pure white. So this will really pop off from that duller white color and really level it up from the shadows to the high points. So just a triad of colors that'll blend in pretty well together and get the real high points, anything that would be directly in the light and for both the front and the back, a little bit of the edge there, a little bit more of the edge than the face of it because of the way the sculpt has that turned. And just good thin paints, letting them dry before I do any secondary coats to give it more opacity. And that's the trim. I think it came out pretty decent. Stands out really well against that green. So going through, we're going to do some of the different leather bits. And I really wanted to showcase two different leathers. Um, and we may do a third, maybe a fourth, um, but I wanted to do like a more soft, supple leather uh, that a lot of people see on belts and pouches. Uh, but I also wanted to do a stiffer leather for the scabbards and bits around the armor and belt area. And that center belt area was actually kind of difficult to see you know, what was armor, what was belting, what was straps. So I went ahead and just went for it and did a, a few different things. I don't know if I'm going to keep them or change them as I go through, but I was pretty overall happy with it today. But just laying in a supple leather brown, and this is Reaper's just leather brown to start. And as I was going through and, and looking at a few different things, there were a couple of things that just caught my eye that I wanted to go ahead and fix kind of outside of the top items that we're going to be focusing on for the, the details on the fabric and some of the leather bits. Um, but when we get to those, I'll talk about them. For the leather... Parts. I thought about doing the back of the van braces as well, uh, but decided I'll save that for a different video because I'll probably do those in a, a different leather color. But just focusing on straps for the armor around the legs, um, the pouch that he's carrying, which is kind of a larger pouch, and then there's almost what looks like a quiver uh, along his back underneath the bedroll and kind of under his hair. And then of course the straps for the pouches and the scabbards. And there again, just a supple leather brown and a couple of layers just because I use really thin paint so I avoid any brush strokes. And there are different ways to paint these kind of things. Sometimes I use a medium brown and then just highlight up to the lighter leather colors to a real light tan. Um, but for some of these smaller minis where they've got lots of little bits just for speed, I think this process works pretty well where I'll lay down a base color and get all the areas that I want to get straps and um, like I said, if he's got belts going on here, this bit here is just straps from the pouch. And then on the other side is a strap going to the scabbard. And I thought about doing them different colors, but figured since they're kind of in the same space, they'll use the same color and a little out of focus. That's a like a little money pouch. And there again, I thought of a softer uh, leather feel. So went with the same supple brown. Uh, just leather brown is what Reaper calls it. 
the camera's having a little bit hard time focusing here and there because it's trying to decide between focusing on jaw and focusing on the Sophie from Reaper. So a couple of times I've got to get it focused on jaw. So one of the items for jaw, the character versus the mini is the weapon. Um, I thought about swapping it out, but there are some in-game pieces that may come into play, so I'm going to keep it as is. But I thought we might have a video of conversion. I decided not to. So we're just going to be focused on painting. And you can see some of the areas in here are really kind of a challenge to get to. But overall, I think it did pretty decent. Getting underneath that arm to get the back of that. Like I said, it almost looks like a quiver, but he's got a sword and a... A dagger or a short sword in the other hand so I don't know why he would have a quiver so I'm just painting it as a leather bit um, maybe it's something to hold a javelin who knows we'll see where it goes in game or even if it comes into play again these minis are just picked out for the kind of race in class that the players are going to be playing so they may be very different in-game to what the miniature that the players will get as a gift will become. I just hope they like them. That's the biggest thing. I do enjoy painting them and uh, gifting them to the players as a thank you for their time and effort. So here we're going on to the scabbard, and this is a really dark, rich red-brown. Um, this here, I want to have that more stiff and almost uh, you know, the boiled leather feel where it's uh, boiled in oil and wax. And generally those have a more red tint. And I find this process works really well for these type of applications for scabbards and belts and sometimes coats or jackets. I think this process works pretty well. Just being careful around that leg because I don't want to mess up. Now this one here is one of the ones where I've seen as I'm getting in there, I see part of the leg I did not paint in the blues. So you can't see it a whole lot there, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the blues that I used originally for the mini and hit that area so that it's got paint on it and matches the rest of the mini. I can't believe I missed that, but a lot of times when you're working with these minis in different colors and everything, it, it can happen. So just check to make sure that that matched okay. Probably go back through and highlight it at some point um, just a little bit because that's the shadow color or the, the darker mid-tone. So I'll have to go back through and touch that up a little bit. But just changing out the palette there a little bit and going back in to finish working on some of the leather bits. This here is a medium brown wash. I'm putting that right over top of that supple leather. As this dries, it's going to darken the recess areas and give a shadow color. And it'll also colorize a little bit of that leather so when I go back and highlight with the same color it's going to have a little bit different tone and just really thin and very runny wash on there but that's a great way to quickly get shadows when you're doing things like this that's why I like that technique because it's got a lot of different areas with the same material, that leather material. So by base coating and then doing a wash, you can quickly go through and get those layered in there. And that's the same process I used on the boots. So I had to set that down and let it dry. There's trouble focusing it 
in. There we go. So here I'm going through with a Terra red, and this is going to go right over that red brown. Now it looks like a lot of contrast, and it actually is. Uh, but for the process, I want to lay this down because it's going to give us a darker area between the, I guess, the, the joint pieces um, and the highest points or the center point. And this is more of a mid-tone here. The colors work really well together for this hardened leather. Once that dries, I go through with that red-brown again, and I just give it a, a wash to tone that red down, that terra red. But I go through and put some on, like I said, what I feel are the belt areas, and then also around the scale mail um, bit that goes above the loincloth because I want to have that kind of highlighted out away from the greens of that loincloth. And this will give the eye a point of separation to where you can tell the fabric is different from the armor. And kind of the same process. It starts with the red-brown and then the terra red. And then once that's dried out, then it just gets a wash of the red-brown again. So this is that skirt area that I was talking about that has the scale mail. Again, just wanting to give some separation. This is almost like a, a black line area in separating those out. Just again, because these are mini, you want to have points of distinction between the different color variations. So with this, it'll do a good job of that. And now going through and just very carefully for that skirt area. And then the belt. And then into little bits of just checking, make sure I got good coverage. And hitting those leather points. You know, a lot of this painting is just lots and lots of layering. So this one here is just picking out some of the details and using that leather brown so that I can start to highlight the different forms, looking at edges, where would it rub, where would the leather be the softest and the most plied, and that's what we want to focus on. Anywhere that this leather could be rubbing against, whether it's armor, setting it down, picking it up against your arm and again a little bit off camera trying to get it back on and keep it in focus a little bit of a challenge but we're up for it and into that I say I think it's supposed to be a quiver but just giving some because it's got some different uh, like character on it I'm actually going to do a highlight on some of the center pieces on that quiver just so it doesn't get lost too much in there. And edging those out for where they'd rub. If you do any like Google search leather belts or anything like that, you'll see where they start to get tonally lighter where they're rubbed and used the most, whether it's a belt hole or a side of a belt. So just looking for those areas where it's going to get the most wear and then highlight those up with that same base color, which has now a lot of 
distinction from the first layer we laid down because of the wash that we put on. And you can see a little bit of that tone really starting to come through on those belts. I really like this technique. I think it works really well. And back into the Terra Red, we're going to start laying that in. Again, this is really thinned down so that it's not super opaque. And we'll blend in with that dulled layer that we did earlier. Just really careful around the leg. And I wanted to do a little bit more on the smaller scabbard for the dagger or short sword, whatever you want to consider it, compared to the other scabbard. So wanted the other scabbard to look a little more worn just because that smaller scabbard would wear on it. Then into the belts. Kind of picking out again where would that rub the most or get the most wear to wear off some of that darker brown that red brown into the almost to where the leather would be its natural color and for the highlight color there that's what we'll do is actually mix some of the leather brown in with that terra red but form looking pretty good uh, definitely starting to look like a more complete mini. And this is another part that was bugging me a little bit. I hadn't completed the lips. I haven't done the eyebrows and I haven't done the hair yet. Um, the hair I want to wait until I get the armor, but not having the lips has been driving me a little crazy as I'm painting this. So I had to go through and blend a little bit of the mid skin tone with a touch of pink so that I could touch up his lips so he had lips. And then here, this is just a khaki mixed with our base of leather brown. And just touching the edging up, again, the wear patterns. Where is this gonna wear the most? Where is that leather going to be getting the most contact with stuff? And depending kind of on the age of leather it could crack and this is the color that you would highlight some of those cracks with but i'm looking at because this party started at level one they haven't been in the field a whole whole long time as adventurers so i wanted to have somewhere to show they you know had backgrounds but their stuff is not old and crusty or brand new and magically enchanted at this point it's level one to level four adventurers so a little bit of wear but overall not worn and crusty i guess is the way I, I like to look at this mini and who knows if the other party members will match because as i go through and paint them the story of course is going to be going on and on and then here are just some highlights into the scabbard areas uh, again, looking at the most wear pattern, where is that going to separate out and get the most rubbing right in the center area? And not too bad. I think that color is coming along pretty good. I want to add a little bit more. It's because I lost a little bit of it. It was a little too dark, so I added in a touch more of the Terra Red onto the smaller scabbard because I do want them to be the similar material. Overall, that's the leather and the textile details. We've got some more leather to do on upcoming videos, but I think that's where we're going to stop it for right now. I think the leather is coming out pretty decent, and I think it's looking pretty good. He's just about ready to go on an adventure. Thanks for watching our video. We hope that you enjoy it, and we'd love to have you subscribe. Feel free to hit that button if you care to get notifications for when we post new content. Leave your comments below and help us answer the question of where will your adventures take you?